my name is James Olin. I'm the game director on the project. And Star Wars The Old Republic is a massively multiplayer role-playing game based in the Star Wars universe. Um, it's uh, being developed by Bioware. And what we're bringing to the MMO genre is storytelling. There has been storytelling in the MMO genre before, but not to the degree which Star Wars The Old Republic is going to do with it. We're going to have fully voiced characters, fully voiced cinematic scenes. You're going to be able to make decisions in the story that's going to impact your character and how your story unfolds. You're going to be able to go to the light side or the dark side. It's going to be an online experience like you've never seen before. Could you tell us a little bit about the uh, classes and the, the characters? Oh yeah. So we have eight separate classes for Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, four classes per side. We have two sides, the Imperials and the Republic. On the Sith Empire side, you can be a bounty hunter, just like Boba Fett. You can be a Sith warrior like Darth Vader, a Sith Inquisitor, kind of like Darth Maul. Or you can be an Imperial agent. Uh, an Imperial agent is kind of our addition to the Star Wars universe. But if you want to think of him, he's kind of a super spy. On the uh, Republic side, you have the Jedi Knight, you have the Jedi Consular, you have the Smuggler, obviously uh, based off of the Han Solo archetype, and you have the Trooper, which um, is a heavily armored, kind of based off the Stormtroopers, except um, they, as a Trooper, you actually kick butt instead of having your butt kicked. <laughs> Um, so, well, there's a lot. Obviously, the storytelling is where we're innovating in. Um, the multiplayer storytelling is something that is not just new to the online space, but new to games uh, in general. You've never seen a game that's allowed a group of players to join a conversation and basically be able to fight over who gets to say the next line. For fans of pen and paper games, I'm in my late 30s, so this might date me a little bit, but for fans of pen and paper games, you know, it was always fun in Dungeons and Dragons to be able to argue about what you're going to say to the NPCs. And this kind of recreates that situation. You're, you're with your friends, and you're getting to, uh, you know, argue over what you said, and did you insult the princess, or, you know, it's 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 a lot of fun. Tell me, uh, what, what do you have in the game for casual versus uh, hardcore players? Um, so, yeah, uh, we want to appeal to a bunch of different audiences. Uh, we want to appeal to Bioware fans, fans of Bioware's previous games, Dragon Age, Mass Effect, Baldur's Gate, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. We also want to appeal to MMO fans, um, because obviously we're an MMO. And finally, we want to appeal to Star Wars fans. So we have a whole bunch of different fans we're appealing to. For the hardcore fans, uh, we want to make sure they have all the trappings of an MMO. And that means that they get to do elder gameplay, such as raiding and uh, you know, what we like to call flashpoints, um, and that they get to do PvP combat in war zones, and that they get an auction house, that there's an economy, uh, that there's a lot of uh, social activity to do, that there's a crafting system. We have all of that. Um, but for the more casual players, players who aren't familiar with online games, uh, we feel that they're going to have a lot of fun because we have things that online games haven't had before. Namely, we have story, which is something that can really get them into, like, uh, immersed in the universe like they wouldn't in another game, another MMO game. Um, in addition, we've made sure the combat's a lot faster paced, it's a lot easier to get into, it's a lot more action-packed. It's not the slow-paced MMO combat that turns off a lot of players who aren't familiar with the genre. Could you give an example of a favorite storyline or this group that you doing? Yeah, there's, there's so many storylines. We have a, a unique storyline for every single character class in the game. Um, to, pick a, to pick a one to love, it would be really difficult. But I am a big fan of Darth Vader and Empire Strikes Back, so I'd have to say that the Sith Warrior storyline is probably my favorite. And there's so many scenes within a storyline that are memorable. Um, because the, uh, you have the opportunity of playing a Sith Lord and, and acting in the same way Darth Vader did. So with your companion characters, for example, you can punish them for failing you, which is something that after watching Empire Strikes Back and being a fan of Darth Vader, I've always wanted to do. <laughs> Yeah, so our party size is four players, so you can have four uh, players together at any given time. However, companion characters, actually I haven't talked about companion characters yet, so that's another thing about our game that's um, new to the MMO space, but not new to Bioware games in general. Bioware games are famous for giving players a companion character, or a group of companion characters that are his friends and buddies that help him out in his adventures. And in Star Wars The Old Republic, you'll get the same. You have a stable of five unique companion characters per class that you get to gather as you adventure. and. Uh, those companion characters both fill a story role. Um, they have their own personalities. You can romance them. You can adventure with them. But they also have a combat role. They can help you out in combat. 
in many different ways, and each companion character has his own um, way of fighting combat. So now back to the groups. Um, so in a, in a, when you're in a group, a companion character actually counts as a full player. So you can have two players and two companions, or you can have four players. But you can't have four players and four companions. And your average group is, you know, you might have a, for example, if you have um, a girlfriend or a wife or a husband who likes to play the game, you know, you two can play the game, have your two characters and have your two companions out. Or if you have a group of buddies, you might have like four players all playing together at the same time. So that's kind of the, the uh, breakdown of that. Right, and so do you want to show us a little bit of the, the gameplay and kind of talk us through? Sure. Um, so at this E3, uh, we're currently showing Tatooine. Tatooine's one of the most iconic worlds. And uh, we haven't shown it yet. It's a huge world. In fact, it's if you're familiar with some of Bioware's previous games, the square miles of Tatooine, I think, is bigger than the entirety of Dragon Age. So I'm just going to show you some of the um, uh, cinematic conversation. Here I'm using this to uh, contact an Imperial officer. And he's going to tell me about a Sith Lord. But due to the uh, sound, the loudness of E3, you're not going to be able to uh, hear the actual conversation going. Now, this is a multiplayer-enabled uh, conversation. So if I was in a group, my other party members would actually be able to make choices. And we'd roll on the choices, and whoever um, won the roll would actually be able to make... Uh, would actually say the line. So I'm just going to skip ahead to uh, the end of this. So, you'll notice down here is my companion character, Blizz. So this is uh, an example of a unique companion character for the bounty hunter. Um, and he's really cute. We knew that when uh, we were, we had to come up with 40 separate companion characters because there's eight classes and five per, uh, per class. And we knew when we were coming up with them that we had to have a Jawa as a companion character. Perfect. And the different uniforms you can get are just great. There's a special uniform um, for uh, more that uh, He'd wear for cold weather climates. It's his hot uniform. It's very cute. So, as I was saying before, Tatooine's immense. So here's the map that I'm using to um, traverse to Tatooine. You can see here on my map, it tells me the location I'm supposed to go to to get to the quest. This is a huge area, but it's only one part of Tatooine. If I zoom out, you can see that it's actually only the jungle and the waste. There's still the Dune Sea, Anchorhead, Mos Isla, Mos Isla. There's a huge, Tatooine is just a gigantic planet. Now to travel through such a gigantic planet, we're not going to force players to wander the sand dunes forever. So we're, we've given them transportation, their own speeder bikes. Wow. Now can you be attacked while you're on your speeder bike? Yes, you can be attacked while you're on your speeder bike. You have to be careful. You can't drive through uh, enemies. So here's some of the wildlife of um, Tatooine. I'm going to avoid him for now. But you can see how gorgeous Tatooine is. Whenever we've developed dozens of worlds, and whenever we um, develop a world, we concept it out, and, and we take a lot of um, we take a lot of time to make sure that each world is unique looking and beautiful. And obviously, for the worlds that are from the movies, we have to make sure that they're evocative of the movies. So do you have an estimate of how many worlds you have uh, 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 when, you, when you finally launch? Oh, we, have, um, we have dozens. We have close to 20 full worlds like uh, at the scale of Tatooine. Not all of them are that big. But um, then we have some smaller worlds as well, specifically for um, what we like to call flashpoints which are four-man, um, the equivalent of a dungeon from another MMO. So a four-man adventure that takes about an hour to two and has some of the, some, a really cool storytelling, some of the, the harder challenges in the game. Re really requires you to work as a group to complete. How, how much of the world is an uh, instance compared to... Uh, uh... Uh, almost, as you see, I, I've not had any instanced uh, part of the world yet at all. 
So a majority, I'd say 90, 95% of a world is, is a, a group. So, for example, this whole area, like when I look at this map, this is almost entirely public space. Um, there is an instanced area right over here. Um, and there's a few, like most of the instance areas are interiors, basically. So I'm gonna get in a fight with some sand people down here. And Bliss is gonna help me out. So I'm gonna activate his suppressive fire mode. That's actually going to uh, help me out with these guys. So I'm gonna stun this first guy, and Blizz will not attack him now because he's been stunned. Then I'm going to uh, flamethrower this guy over here, power shot him. As you'll notice that my heat's going up. As I, um, my bounty hunter actually is off a heat system. So what that means is, as I use my abilities, my heat meter goes up. And if I get too, if my heat gets too hot. I have to either vent it, which I can do it right here. I'm venting my heat right now. Or I just have to wait for it to, to die down. Finish him off with my retractable blade. 